Okay, so what I want to do here is talk about a common set of arguments which gets thrown at blockchain technology. So the basic argument is, is that, that people will come back and say, you're reinventing the wheel. You have decentralized business models which run on much faster networks. What on earth are you trying to create here? You've got YouTube where creators get monetized. You've got Uber, where people can go out there in their cars and drive people around. You've got Betfair, where you've got a decentralized network where you can do sports betting and you don't have to have a centralized, well, not as much of a centralized source, which is taking all the revenue. You've got Airbnb, so you can unlock renting your rooms. Um, oh yeah, and also you can throw in there, there's too much energy being used as well on top of it. So it's just a total rubbish business plan, it's never going to fly, it's going to go up and then it's collapsing. Now, maybe they say, okay, well, we can possibly see it with the financial industry, with, with money, let's be exact there, because of uh, inflation and all of these unfunded liabilities and say fiat which is not backed by anything uh generally fails or always fails pretty much and whenever these fails happens you're gonna get the populace going straight into all of these cryptos or bitcoin or whatever is flexible at that time so yeah you can understand that having this autonomous public ledger that's just uh out of the control hands of these centralized sources of governance is kind of handy but all of these silly little business models on the side they're never going to fly now just to um state a lot of what is being created now i don't think is necessarily going to work out that well just by the power and the corruption side of things so what we have is you have corporate decisions get made for the interest of the board so they're usually the biggest shareholders or the people who are the shareholders themselves or the government who is monitoring this corporation and telling them what to do and how they should do it and legislating them so that they are secured and they can be this big giant monopoly and then they can take the revenue and all that kind of stuff. But what happens in this big power corrupting process is that the end user may get forgotten. Now what I suggest is that there will be these decentralized systems, but a multiverse. Uh, I've talked about this in the past, some of my videos if you have a, have a chance to look through them, but there, there would be a multiverse of, say, for example, I won't get into the complexities, but you can use a lending system based upon scarcity. What you would do is say, okay, one system is going to have a much more higher rate of scarcity in comparison to Bitcoin. Therefore, that lending model is going to work in a certain method. Then we're just going to clone it, and then we're going to have a slightly less scarcity model. And then we're going to have literally thousands of them, maybe millions of them. And then what people can do is they can jump between one tokenized economy into another. Now, that would be um, an ecosystem which doesn't have any intellectual property rights. It's um, a system where the end user can, like, a, like water flowing through systems, can go to one thing that's attractive to them to another thing that is attracted to them, maybe based upon their risk profile or, or whatever they feel like. But this can be applied to every other situation. I know obviously you've got YouTube and you've got Steam it where maybe there is more of a decentralized uh, stream, but you do have centralized authority. And even, say for example, very autonomous current cryptocurrencies that exist to this day, there is a governance model, but I would suggest that the more decentralized governance model is probably better. But going one step ahead is the multiverse governance model where you literally 
shit out a thousand different versions with slight different variances of rates and beneficial changes and everything else which will benefit one person in comparison to another so that that, that the the market consensus can move and, f- and flow depending on what serves them best rather than a centralized source trying to second guess what the end user wants. So this decentralized movement isn't as much as what you think it is as about jumping into one coin or one tokenized economy, sitting on that and then getting rich quick. It is more about the end user and uh, really getting ourselves off our butts and finding what is working for us most and what we feel like is a is a is like a democratic unified movement into what structures our economy better than one thing to another so we can expect that failure is going to be extreme it's going to be like 99% of all of these uh, coins are going to fail and never even maybe even get touched in in some examples that's kind of different to what the landscape is right now i think everyone just jumps on board it straight away but literally we're going to be spitting out tons and tons of these tokenized economies of which maybe not even n- never get utilized but for example it's only just data on a hard drive sitting somewhere in a server that can be activated at certain points depending on whether the market requires it or not. So there'll be a, a total underutilization of a lot of tokenized economies, but just ready there and waiting depending on what the market requires. You would say that these uh, highly federalized coins it's going to be very difficult. Obviously, if you're going to require a lot of uh, coding and everything else, it's going to require a lot of effort for those to compete against a system where there's a very simplified set of rules in which people can fluctuate from one to the other in comparison to a coin, which is highly complex, does a lot of things to a lot of people, won't actually move as much. Now, This is where the dividing line is compared to, say, the corporate world or the business world where you are trying to fundamentally serve individual set of customers as perfectly as you can compared to creating an ecosystem, an economy that's autonomous, running by itself on a public ledger which cannot be reversed or changed back. It just runs and it fails and it works and it doesn't. So tokenization is going to get ginormous. You think it's a lot now? is going to times by many multiples like what you would see in how processes get faster every year. It will be to that level. That is the basis of how I see business models and structures working in the future. There is really no point trying to compete against a centralized system which can serve the customer on a very, in a very bespoke way ecosystems with different variances of rates or variances of auditing methods are going to be where the business expansion is in a tokenized economy. So there you go. It probably gives you less security in thinking that holding on to one coin for a long time is going to be a very good venture. But remember, currency has been centralized and controlled from the dawn of time. Now we are moving it into a system where currency isn't the centralized force that it's been from all time. We're moving into a world where voting with our feet rapidly restructures our world.